Something that's on a lot of people's minds here is we, we started by talking about business leadership, and a lot of people in here are business leaders, to be sure. Highly practical suggestion that we have that's also consistent with the way that we want our hearts to work. One of the principles that we have in my organization is that morals have to come before markets. And I think that's manifestly true in any system in the world. And, and the more you rely on markets, by the way, the more you have to think about your morals first. I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. But let's go to what is on a lot of people's minds here as well, which is to move from the business to the political. Apply some of these ideas to what we're actually seeing politically today. Not, not necessarily being really personal about what we're doing, but, but what's going wrong politically and how can we constructively change that on the basis of trust, on the basis of leadership that's aspirational and that's uniting instead of dividing? What we see in politics is a very, it's a, it's a clear mirror of what's happening in business. They're, the, they're one and the same, where short term has been prioritized over long term. Um, where uh, um, what's in it for the organization has been prioritized over what's in it for um, the community. Um, <clears throat> and whereas an organization, in, in, in public companies, for example, meeting some arbitrary projection on some arbitrary date and meeting some analysts' um, uh, projection. I'll tell you a quick funny story aside. Um, Gary Ridge, who's the CEO of WD40, great company, um, his analyst uh, called him up, uh, on the analyst call, uh, chastised him and said, you missed, you missed your numbers. And Gary said, no, 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 I missed your numbers. Mine are fine. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but what we see in politics is people prioritizing their re-election over doing, doing something great. I had a, a conversation with a member of Congress. I will leave their name out of it. And in a moment of, it was a very uncomfortable conversation. Uncomfortable for them, not for me. Um, where I basically said, I know human beings, I, I know people in uniform who would risk their lives and have risked their lives to do the right thing. I said, you won't even sacrifice your job to do the right thing. And I said, here's the joke. If you lost your election, you'll get picked up by some, by some lobbying group or some law firm anyway, and you will make triple the money you're making now. So what exactly are you losing? Like, where is the sacrifice exactly? And she, uh, and she actually agreed. She, uh, she said, that we absolutely do prioritize getting, our, uh, re getting reelected over some of the decisions we have to make, and then has this ridiculous rationalization that because if I don't win my reelection, I can't, I can't do good, which is, which is a backwards logic. Um, you do good, and if you do good, hopefully you'll win your reelection sometimes, and you can still do good even if you don't get reelected. Like, they're not, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, and, and I think this started, I, I think one of the problems is is that it's become a competitive environment politics and it's no longer a cooperative environment. And I, I, I think we can trace it back to Newt Gingrich's uh, contract with America, where he was the first one to tell members, because remember, when you got elected to national office, what you would do is you'd move your family to Washington and you would fight on the, on the floor during the day, but then you'd all go to PTA meetings together at night and sit in the bleachers and watch your kids play ball together and you knew each other as human beings and you saw each other as human beings. Now they come to Washington by themselves, they work for two and a half days, then they go back to their, to their to home, they don't move their families, and they don't actually know each other. They, they, sometimes even within their own party. They literally have no human and social interactions, so they only see each other as competitors, not as people. Um, and um, I think this is a very destructive way to, to run any organization. Um, we all know this, that it's difficult to run, to develop relationships uh, at a distance. We all know that it's much easier to resolve conflict when we are in a room together fighting with somebody as opposed to typing it or sending mean emails to each other. Um, or tweeting. Or tweeting at each other, yeah. Um, Not that that's salient no, in our yeah. culture today. Hypothetically speaking. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think, I think federal, I think uh, national politicians should move their families to Washington again and try and get to know each other as humans again. I think we've completely lost the humanity in politics. I want to underline something that Simon said just a minute ago because I think it's really important for us to understand. That's central to the way that he thinks and it's hugely useful for all of us. He does a lot of work with the military, he does a lot of work with business, he does a lot of work with politicians. And what he has asked in a nutshell is this. When he talks to people in the military, he realizes that they have answered the question, I know what I'm willing to die for. We don't have to confront that in modern life very much. Yet we should be able to have the answer to that question, and at very least have the answer to the question as leaders, what am I willing to fail for? 
What am I willing to be fired for? What am I willing to be humiliated for? Great leaders can answer that question. And if the answer is nothing, there's a problem. Mm. That's what he's saying mm. in a nutshell here. And that's just the big thing that each of us can take away. Mm. What am I willing to be humiliated for? Mm. Where is it a good value to me where the benefits are higher than the costs? And be able to sort that one out. Sort that one out on the way to, to aspirational leadership. And I think you're touching on what leadership is. You know, leadership has nothing to do with rank. Leadership is a responsibility. It's not about being in charge. It's about taking care of those in your charge. And we, you know, I know many people who sit at the highest levels of organizations, we all do, who are not leaders. They have authority, and we do as they tell us because they have authority over us, but we would not follow them. And we all know people who are very junior in organizations who have no authority, but they've made the choice to look after the person to the left of them, and they've made the choice to look after the person to the right of them, and that's why we call them leaders. Leaders are not necessarily the ones in charge. They're the ones with the courage to go first, first towards the unknown, first towards the danger, first to be humiliated because it's the right thing. And the amazing thing is, is the reason we call them leaders is because when they do that, others follow. Mm. Um, and and it, really, it really is a courage thing. 